have to understand at this level that, yes, the security sector reform is a process. But despite, I mean, there are, it is time bound, obviously, and there is a benchmark. And this benchmark, which is accepted internationally, that's what I am trying to put across. But nonetheless, and notwithstanding, that doesn't mean that we are dragging our foot and we are, I mean, ensure we are moving towards or looking at five years as our target. No, we are doing everything possible. But as a process, there are challenges. All that I want to say here is that the, the safety sector reform is in progress. And for the security that has been uh, completely dismantled for, so for long, for that long, we don't expect that to, you know, to be completed in, in the... In fact, this, it's going to be a continuous process. As what, what, what we are looking for is to, the documents has to come, and we will align ourselves to those documents. But it, it requires the participation of every one of us, including even the journalists, to help in making sure that the security sector is properly reformed. I, one of the things that you said, you don't, um, the, there's no, there's nothing like uh, reform, you have not seen any reform. That one does create some doubts in, in my mind, because all that we have said here, if you said you've not, there's no reform. Bali has taken at least 30 minutes of our time here explaining what, what, what are the advancements what, and what happened during this period. So for somebody to say you have not seen anything. And we also said, he, said it here that you, some of these security sectors this is, uh, that are in the, going to be in the document are overtaken by events. NIA, SIS now is not investigating criminal matters anymore. So that, that, that means there is a security sector reform in the NIA. The, 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 the armies are not com taking complaints from the members of the public. That's also a security sector reform in that line. The police also, their attitude towards certain uh, individuals has also changed. You have seen an instance when a police officer tortured somebody and is taken before. That was not happening before. There was no commission created to investigate into those matters. Now that the commission has invest uh, conducted investigation and they come out with their conclusion, I think that there's, there's a little bit of reform. For somebody to start to say there is no reform, I definitely say no to that. The, when is the, 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 uh, the, 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 the reform going to end? That probably should be the question that we should ask here. It will take a long time. What we are doing is we are serious. This government is serious. That's why we have put up a national security policy, a national security strategy which is ready, a security sector reform strategy, downsizing, right-sizing, lots is going on. Security sector reform, please, it's not only about the army, the armed forces. I know there are a lot of problems with the armed forces, but it's about immigration, GRA, prisons, drug squad, SIS, judiciary, the parliament, we are reforming as a country. But everybody is concentrating, thinking about armed forces. Yes, we are one of it. That's why I'm not moderating, because I'm just a component in all the reform. Interior is a component. SIS is a component. So please, I want journalists to take this home. It's not only about the armed forces. The SSR is about the Gambia changing our mindset, because we're, we're doing things that we are behind. That's just the truth. Reform is not only the armed forces with guns there. It's also about our young people, our generation as Gambians, to, to change our line of thinking. Regardless of whatever is happening, the security sector reform process is ongoing. It will continue to go, you know, I mean, I mean, it will, it, it will continue to, 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 to evolve. And as you have heard from uh, both the Minister of Defense and the Minister of Interior, but also the uh, head of the security sector reform process, this is something that government is passionate about. I mean, government is committed to it. It's our pet, I mean, our baby. And we will continue to give it the necessary attention 
it deserves, including committing resources to it. That is why I mean, a, a draft bill is coming that will clearly define the role of the National Security Office within the overall government bureaucracy. And for the first time also, as you have heard from the Defence Minister, we are going to have a national defence policy. These are all important reform processes that will define the character of our national security reform process. We have also seen, I mean, for the first time in the history of this country, a manual being developed, printed and conceptualized by the Gambia Police Force to help new recruits understand, because most of these people for 20 years were part of a system that is completely different from what we have now. So today, a manual is developed that is guiding them, that is supporting them. You have heard in the prisons where prisoners are being trained in different skills so that when they go out, they can go with something and start a life. So this is, this, these are things that are unprecedented and they will continue. So the reform is not only talking about I mean, tangible things that you can see and touch, but these are things also that will have very serious impact on the lives of not only the target beneficiaries, but also the institutions. So really, I think, I mean, uh, the, 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 the commitment of the government is, 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 is still very high, and the political will is there. There is a strong political will from the president to his, I mean, our key ministers that are part of this process, the entire cabinet, the National Security Office, but also key influencers in the society. There is some misconception about the whole process of this transition that we are going through. We have the security sector reform. We have the TRRC related victim center. We have the human rights and I mean commission. We also have in the making there are coming to be issues relating to anti-corruption or whatever, but we also have the CRC. But we have to be careful here and I think we need to understand that among all these players they are interconnected, they are definitely interrelated, but they are sitting under different jurisdictions. It is only security sector reform that sits under my jurisdiction as a technical obviously with the political guidance of the political executive, even the ownership the commitment and the will is all guided and the directive is given from the executive. But we work closely with all these three, TRRC, etc., but they are directly under the jurisdiction of the Attorney General and the Minister, Minister of Justice, meaning they are sitting under the Ministry of Justice. So you can see there is a misunderstanding, especially about the public's perception. People do ask us about, I mean, those, I mean, soldiers, those police officers, and issues relating to, I mean, uh, crime, and those who have gone through the TRRC, etc. For the TRRC in particular, I think it has been coming on several times mm -hmm. that it was, I mean, a, a directive and it was enacted by the National Assembly and then the just, Justice Ministry has been given a task that, the, sorry, the TRRC Commission, a task to look at all everything that has been done at a I mean, uh, atrocity and the uh, issues relating to it. And then they will come up definitely with a, I mean, a report. And this report will be taken to the government mm -hmm. and there will be a white paper. Mm -hmm. 
So for one to think that, I mean, lack of addressing some of those issues while the process is still ongoing, I think uh, probably I would say may not be very fair. And the last one is, you did mention that my name came up in the TRRC, but I think it was cleared. I have never appeared there because they have investigated and found it as a fact that the period they were even talking about, I was not active in the military. I was posted in Mansakonko as a commissioner. In fact, it was five of us. On the 15th of August, myself, Kaba Bajo, I mean, Modu Bojang, uh, Amadou Suare, and Musa Balde were appointed and we were released from the military and we went to serve in, I mean, uh, the provinces as, I mean, commissioners. He is a living witness. So some of the members even uh, know that at that time I was definitely not in the army.